Hey internet, for this video I'm going to install and test out the Cooler Master Hyper 612 on an i7-5960X while inside a micro ATX case. Let's see if this huge heatsink is enough to cool a CPU that most recommend be cooled with liquid. So this is the Cooler Master Hyper 612. I got the single fan version. There's a dual fan one as well, but since I'm going to be using a micro ATX case, it's better I go with this one as there might not be enough room for two fans. For comparison on just how humongous the Hyper 612 is, the box for the Hyper T4 is about half its size. Let's open this up. The Hyper 612 should support processor sockets from AMD's AM3 to Intel's LGA 2011 3 socket. Mounting brackets and a big 120mm CPU fan. Here it is, the giant heatsink. This thing feels heavy. Copper heat pipes and aluminum heatsink fins. It's done this way because a copper base plate transfers heat from the CPU faster than an aluminum one would. Aluminum dissipates heat faster than copper, hence the aluminum fins. The design of the Hyper 612 makes it so the copper pipes quickly transfer CPU heat to the aluminum fins, where it is quickly dissipated by the fan blowing air into the fins. Although this is an efficient design and will keep even the most beastly CPU cool under load, since it's not a closed system like an all-in-one liquid cooler, the heat dissipated from the CPU will eventually leave the case, essentially making the room be a few degrees warmer. That's one major disadvantage to having air-cooled CPUs. The computer will act as a small heater. That's something to consider when going with air cooling, as opposed to closed-loop liquid cooling. Alright, installing the heatsink on an X99 Fatality Micro motherboard. Have to use the LGA 2011 3 brackets for this. Cooler Master provides brackets for most of the socket types. Screwing in the brackets for the 120mm CPU fan. Attaching the Hyper 612 heatsink. The humongous heatsink dominates a large portion of the motherboard. Consider installing the RAM first before mounting it on the CPU. I wouldn't recommend using this type of cooler on a smaller micro ATX case. It covers about 40% of a micro ATX motherboard when installed. Luckily for me, the Prodigy M case I have has plenty of room for a heatsink as monstrous as this one. I get very little clearance with a GTX 970. This may affect temps. I just want to show that it's possible to use this type of cooler on a powerful X99 chip while inside a micro ATX case. Alright, HW monitor is running at idle right now. I originally tried this part using screen capture software, but it always brings the temps up when it runs. So I'm using a camera instead to film the monitor. The temps are actually quite good on a closed micro ATX case, between 31 to 35C at idle, on an i7-5960X while inside a micro ATX case. It's also virtually noiseless. Now let's see how the temps are during load. Here we can guesstimate to see how much of an overclock the i7 can get by looking at its stock load temps. I'm getting around 55 to 60C at load, which is not bad considering this is air cooling. It will probably be able to push a 3.5 to 3.8 gigahertz overclock at around 70C under load, which is alright for air cooling. I'm actually quite surprised at how well the Hyper 612 performed in a closed micro ATX case using a powerful i7-5960X. Also the fan is just as quiet under load. There's a couple of takeaways from this test. It's possible to get an overclock out of the 5960X using the Hyper 612. It won't be an overclock you would get out of a liquid cooler, but you will still be able to get respectable overclocks between 3.5 to 3.3 GHz using the Hyper 612. That's around a 16% increase. The other takeaway is the computer being a mini heater. 
Since air cooling dissipates heat through air, that air will eventually escape from the case and heat up surrounding areas. After using this computer for about a month now, my room has always been a good 5 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than any other room in the house. I suppose that's good if you live in a cold area and want your computer to act as a secondary heater, but if your bedroom is small with little ventilation, or you just live in an area that's warm, a closed loop liquid cooler may be a better option. And that's it. Give a like if you thought this video was helpful, or a dislike if you feel otherwise. Also, thanks for watching.